Hi everyone, Randy Craighead and welcome back to Foundations. And today we're gonna to be talking about giving a short overview on the gifts of the Spirit. And I trust you've been doing your Foundations book and uh, getting into the Bible and digging things out from the scripture and answering all those questions. And remember, like I said last time, the Bible is the answer key, all right? And it's the answer key for life, quite honestly. So hang in there, keep doing the book and you're gonna learn so much. All right, now I'm gonna talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In the last lesson, we talked about the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Now I wanna talk a little bit more about what happens when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the cool things that God does through us because of the Holy Spirit. Remember, Jesus is now at the right hand of the Father, technically, but he left the Holy Spirit here on earth so we can be endued with power, his power, to be able to do amazing things in this earth. And one of the cool things is that signs and wonders begin to follow our lives, and we begin, Christ through us, the Holy Spirit through us, begins to build up and edify the church, the body, each other. Someone there in your small group. You may have uh, a word for them, a word of encouragement, those kind of things. And so uh, or God may give you some discernment about a particular situation there they may be telling you about and some insight, some godly biblical insight. So there's a lot of cool things. So uh, let's just jump right in. And, uh, and I love this. God's people, us believers, we really are the world's wonder. Even back then, in the early days in Rome, they just could not figure out what is up with these Christians. We can't kill them. We can kill them, but you can't kill them. They just, they will not give up. They're just, there's just something about them. And so even back then, then the world, just the Roman government particularly, they just could not figure out what's up with these Christians. We are a sign and a wonder, okay? And so... It says here in Isaiah, and Isaiah is saying this, which is, I love this verse. I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders. That's what you're about as a Christian. Sure, you're saved, but you're saved for the purpose. Sure, you're water baptized, you're water baptized for a purpose. Sure, you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're, but, you're, but you're filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit for a purpose, okay? And, but what? Because we are signs and wonders to the world. And I love it in John 14. He who believes in me, this is Jesus saying this, the works that I do, he will do, he or she will do also, and greater works than these he will do, he or she will do. Isn't that amazing? Christ is saying that you're going to do even greater works than what I did. That is incredible, okay? And so we are wonders to the world. Now, God has provided the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which we talked about last time, and the gifts of the Spirit. That's how we interrelate with each other. The gifts of the Spirit as means to replicate himself. That's how he, we're, we're called little Christ. We're Christians and we're little Christ. That's what the word says. The Bible says that. that mean, we are, by, because of the Holy Spirit living inside, because we're believers and the Holy Spirit living inside of us, we, this, it's a way that we can replicate Christ to the world and each other. In us to do what? To change the world. To change the world. That's what Christ did. He changed the world. Paul's encouragement is for us is to pursue both. Okay? The baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. In other words, don't walk around. I want to make sure you understand that this is available for you. It's powerful. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. That we are to pursue love and desire for spiritual gifts. And did you receive the Holy Spirit? So we, we are to desire the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And, and then we also are to pursue and desire spiritual gifts. All right. Now, what are the gifts? And so what I've done is I've broken, I've, I broke this down. And, uh, and actually, I, someone else did this, but I thought this was such a cool um, diagram that, I, that, that I, I wanted to show it to you. But uh, we have four lists of 21 spiritual gifts. That's the best we can see. You know, some people might say there's 22 or 23 or 19 or 20 or whatever. But, uh, but I like this one. It, it breaks, breaks all the gifts down and, and it categorizes them into three categories. Okay, there's ministry gifts. There's the manifestation gifts. And there's the motivational gifts. And then in 1 Corinthians 12, we see the ministry gifts. These, are, these here expanded somewhat. 
Okay? And so these are the gifts. The ministry gifts are found in Ephesians 4.11. The manifestation gifts are found in Ephesians 12. And then the motivational gifts are found in Romans chapter 12. And then the ministry gifts expand in 1 Corinthians 12, which is at the, at the end of 1 Corinthians here uh, when he explains the, the manifestation gifts. So there's 21 distinct different gifts that, that are displayed at what best we can find uh, in Scripture. Okay. Now, let's break these down a little bit. I don't want to talk about the, the ministry gifts, okay? We call, sometimes we call this the five-fold office gifts. These are kind of the offices of the church. And so we see this in Ephesians 4.11. And it says that he himself, which is Christ, Jesus Christ himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. So those are the five office gifts. Okay, these are individuals. These are people. These people are, quote, the gifts to the body of Christ. And what's their purpose? For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. So the office gifts are to prepare and to equip the body of Christ for the work of the ministry and, for, and to edify them, to build them up, to encourage them, to teach them, okay, from the scripture. Edifying of the body of Christ till we all come into the unity of the faith, okay? And of the knowledge of the Son of Christ to a perfect man. In other words, until we're, we're the whole, our journey, remember, sanctification is to grow up and to be mature. We're to be mature men and women in Christ, okay? With biblical understanding, biblical worldview, okay? That we are to mature, to become a mature man or woman to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And that is a mouthful. In other words, we're to be Christ-like. <laughs> that's, that's what that's saying. So that is the ministry gifts. Now we see the nine manifestation gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the famous chapter there. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of what? All. Okay? So these are gifts that God, you might have one more dominant than another. Okay? So you're, you're endowed with these things. Okay? And you can operate in all of them, but you're probably going to have one that's more dominant than another. Okay? Just like your wiring. You have a certain, you're wired, you're wired a certain way. You have a certain personality. Okay? For to one is given the word of wisdom, and I'm going to go through it, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, faith, the gifts of healing, the working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, and to another, different kinds of, remember, languages, tongues, and to another, the interpretation of those languages. Okay, God can give you an interpretation of a particular heavy language that, that can be displayed. And we can talk about that more. And by the way, go, into the, go to the YouTube uh, lesson and I talk for, I expand all of this out and I go into a lot more detail. Okay, I'm just giving you an overview. Now, what are the motivational gifts? Okay, these motivational gifts, it's basically that motivational gifts display kind of our wiring, our, our personality, what we have quite kind of a, a bent towards, okay? These gifts express our God-given design, how we're wired, our design when relating to others. It's similar to manifest, manifestation gifts in expression, okay? And you can go back to the list and kind of see what those are. You might locate yourself. In fact, there's a test you can do, a little assessment. It kind of helps you discover what some of your, some of your wiring is. And you can, you can find that probably online. Someone may have a small measure of each, but typically there's one that's more dominant than another, okay? And so uh, just like, for example, an Enneagram, the DIST test, you have a dominant and then a one that's not, not so dominant. You have a, a primary and a secondary and sometimes a tertiary. But anyway, that's, how, that's, how, that's what this is, okay? Uh, now, what is the purpose of these gifts, okay? The purpose of the gifts is not for you. That's so important to understand this. God gave you a certain wiring, not for you, but for others. I'm going to say that again. These gifts are not for you, even though we all like to receive gifts. But they're not for you. They're for others when you're relating to people. It's very important to remember that. So they're not for us, number one. The baptism in the Holy Spirit and spiritual gifts is to make us effective members of the body of Christ and expression of Christ himself. So God gives us these gifts so we can, be a, it's a, we can have effective ministry to each other when the body's hurting 
and they didn't encourage it, and so forth. Okay, so it's to help build the body up and to edify the body. Believe me, there's enough out there to kind of tear the body down. So we're there to help each other. That's why small groups are so important. And I'm going to unpack that in another lesson. And so they're not for us. It helps us to be effective, okay, for each other. And they're for the common good. I didn't say that. Scripture says this. They're given for the common good, 1 Corinthians 12. And used for building up the church. What's the, who, who's the church? Us. It's not this building. It's us, the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones. That's the technical definition of, of the church. The ecclesi- ecclesia. You might hear Ecclesiastes, okay? Ecclesia. We are the called out ones. That's what that means. So it's for use for the building up of the ecclesia, you and I. Number four, with minister gifts, the fivefold, okay, that's the, that's, the, that's the person itself, okay, with ministry gifts, the person is the gift, and with spiritual gifts, the person has the gift, okay? So that's, a, that's an important distinction, okay? So the ministry gifts, the fivefold ministry, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, okay, those are the gifts to the body of Christ. Now, now even, even, even those, and those people have operate in certain gifts, okay? That's why they're distinctive. Some are ap- more pa- apostolic, others are more pastoral, others are, have more of a teaching gift and so forth. Some are evangelists, some are pr- pr- prophetic, okay? So with the ministry gifts, the person is the gift, and with spiritual gifts, the person has the gift, okay? That's everybody, okay? Everybody. So we all have a, a spiritual gift at some level. And what's the basis for the spiritual gift? Love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 the, the, uh, the two greatest chapters on the gifts uh, that, that, that we see in Scripture are 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14. The Apostle Paul breaks it down. But in the middle of those two chapters is the famous love chapter. Okay? And he talks about this. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Very important. So he sandwiches that right in the middle of those two chapters. But he says this in 1 Corinthians 12, but earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way, which is love. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. So our first, first pursuit is love, okay? The love of Christ, the love for one another, okay? Because if you have love for one another, you're going to have the, the right motivation and the right attitude when expressing a gift towards someone else. So the love chapter, like I said, is 1 Corinthians 13, the sandwich right between the two great chapters on spiritual gifts. Now, what are the benefits of spiritual gifts? So the benefits of spiritual gifts, it builds up and it strengthens the church members, okay? That's so important. So it builds up and strengthens. Number two, it has the ability to unlock lock a, person's, a person in their soul, Okay? I can't tell you the number of times that I'm talking with someone they're kind of at a critical juncture or maybe they're in a situation in their life and they're trying to figure out things and God can just give you a certain insight into their life. Maybe it's a word of knowledge, uh, a, a spirit of dis- you're discerning. Okay, there's a word of knowledge where you bring something forth or there's, there's a prophetic, something prophetic the Lord may give you for that person and all of a sudden, it's like the light bulb goes off. Oh, wow, I didn't, I didn't see it that way. Okay? And again, all of us have blind spots. That's why, we need, that's why we need to be in a small group. That's why we need to have spiritual family around us because we don't see it all. And so we allow, and it's important because, again, you're only accountable as you want to be, right? You know? And so it's important that you open your life, you be uh, uh, vulnerable, allow people to speak into your life. Hey, can, can, I'm really struggling with this. Can you, you see anything that, I, that I'm missing? And all of a sudden, you can unlock something in their soul, and it can change the course of their destiny. And so it's very powerful. And so uh, these spiritual gifts, and that's how we work together. We don't lord them over. Uh, people, but we very humbly work because we love that person. We work with them, and it can release someone into their destiny. So that's a quick overview of this chapter, and I hope that helps. And, uh, and next time we're going, talking about, we're going to be talking about faith. So uh, God bless you. Keep working in your foundations book, and I'll see you next lesson.